I want to do is break down a purple dress for Suzanne. All right, so I'm going to go to share screen. Share screen. Yes, please share that. Okay, great. Now, this dress is one that Suzanne asked about. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I want to spend just maybe like 10 or 15 minutes on this. All right, now this is has a flesh mesh complete top and bottom. And this is this feature is part of the advanced program how to do this one piece mesh with no seams. We've got, well, there's not no seams, but there's no seams going over the shoulder. There's no bodice seams. The only one runs right up underneath here. Now, because this one has a very high crew neck, there you have a couple of options to get into it. In this particular dress, I chose to put in an invisible zipper. I made um, several other dresses for this lady, probably five or 10 over the years. Cute little lady in her 70s in Tallahassee, Florida. She's adorable. And she does floral arrangements for her hobby. She's a master floral arranger. And so she has very specific color concepts and she always likes one color dresses. So she's very clear on what she wants. She always wants flesh colored mesh, not the colored stuff, and she always wants single color dresses. So in that sense, she was a dream to work with. So long as I kept in those two parameters, she was a happy camper. In future dresses for her, I actually made this without the zipper. So I gave her a side zipper in a different dress and then a different shoulder seam to get into it. And that's also part of the advanced training. On the mesh or on the lace, this particular bodice is a kind of a stretch lace over a jersey type fabric. So jerseys are very difficult to find now. In the States, we, um, we call them a trico, and they're sold kind of in your local fabric stores, they're sold kind of as pajama fabric, except that the trico that was sold for ballroom dancing, and it went out just a few years ago, it will very likely come back in. It had less stretch, and so it had a little more body. This is an asymmetrical design. Everything on it's really very asymmetrical. And if I draw a bunch of lines here, don't, okay. This is so weird when I can't hear any of you talking because there we go. Now that's a straight line. Um, so when this was, you have a couple of options if you want to make this for yourself. Oh, the other thing, let me just run through the basics here. So it's asymmetrical. The bustier part right here at the top really is very symmetrical. And the only thing that makes it asymmetrical is the fact that I created a little more lace going up on one side to kind of counterbalance the lace that cascades off on the right thigh. The low cut opening is definitely asymmetrical by maybe two inches or five centimeters. This um, actually, and Luis, you had asked about this a while back. This is Georgette, or what you know, in the States we call chiffon. It is gathered maybe two to one. It doesn't have very much gathering, and it's just stitched right in the center of the sleeve, held on in place by more lace. And your other option, if you did not want it on top, is that you could set the gathered Georgette in actual part of the seam. And then once you've kind of basted it in, made sure it's the, the proper width that you want, then you can permit stitch it and serge it just like always. This look goes in and out of style. Uh, and I had not even realized it was back in style until Louise asked me about it a few weeks ago. It's probably been a few months by now, but so that's the gist on that. When you're determining the width on this, use it based on your arm length and your arm thickness. Because if you are putting this particular kind of sleeve on a woman who has really beefy arms, then if this is very wide, it can actually make 
her biceps look beefier. So if, it, if this gather part goes too far up the arm, it actually draws attention to a heavy tricep or a heavy bicep. So on a heavier lady, I would probably do a thinner one, maybe a four inch or a 10 centimeter gather versus this lady is obviously very petite and so she could handle a very wide gathered piece. So use your judgment on that when you're designing it. This is a three layer skirt. It is fluted and by that I mean that it is tapered down so as opposed to it being an A-line, if it were an A-line, there would be a lot more fabric in here, but it's just, it's nice and kind of sleek over the hips and then the volume flies out at the bottom. This has a single row of either four or six ply um, ostrich bows on the bottom, I would have to check that. It also has um, a very skinny wriggling boning in the hem as opposed to crinoline. Um, for, for my thought, if you're going to put feather boas on the bottom of a hem, crinoline does not hold up the weight very well. So I like something a little stiffer, either fishing line or the wriggling boning. And the wriggling boning, I, from what I can tell, is starting to come back in style, which means that I will then create another bonus video to add to the complete ball gown program so that as that comes back in you all you know have the training on that